use AI or perish. Okay, it's a big challenge. Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this week I've been participating in a workshop here in Istanbul uh, named Navigating uh, the Future with AI, where professors, uh, executives from a big Turkish company, but also representatives from other countries like Kuwait, uh, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan and uh, Malaysia, they have been participating here uh, and uh, all of them are showing how uh, the, they bring AI from theory into the real world. So to show you more, I'm going to sit down with some of the executives and representatives of these companies like Turkish Airlines or some Turkish defense companies, uh, the representatives from Pakistan, and show how they are integrating the AI into their own businesses. Uh, we're also going to talk about the risks it poses. Artificial intelligence isn't just a buzzword anymore. It's transforming the way we fly, the way we defend our nations, and even the way young entrepreneurs are building the future. But the big question remains. How is AI really being used today? And to what benefits does it bring? To understand this better, I sat down with some of the participants here at the workshop. Uh, here with us uh, today we have uh, Mr. Ali Kush, who is uh, from Turkish Technology, Turkish Airlines. Uh, very pleasure to have you uh, among us. It was very beneficial personally for me, but I guess uh, it was very useful for and very uh, useful for other guests participating. Could you please walk us through like what uh, your department actually doing and how you are implementing the AI uh, on the real world in uh, such a great company actually like Turkish Airlines? Turkish technology is uh, really uh, a key player for the aviation industry and we are uh, working uh, with uh, Turkish Airlines, Asia, Turkish Technic and uh, also uh, Turkish Cargo. All these companies are uh, in top 10 uh, within the world and uh, we, uh, we are supporting them with the uh, latest technologies in AI. Uh, in the operation of the aircraft operation, we are using computer vision technologies uh, with the artificial intelligence, machine learning and also uh, image processing. Uh, AI is not just a bubble like we used to, many people used to think, but it's a real world usage and a company such as like uh, Turkish Airlines uh, seems AI is, uh, is the heart of the operations, which must probably going to make it more efficient and uh, more easy for passengers and the operations within the company. In Turkish Airlines, our aim is to be the top three digital uh, airline in the world, and uh, with this. Uh, target uh, we are uh, digitalizing our all processes and also implementing artificial intelligence and machine learning within all our uh, applications our uh, uh, processes as well uh, so uh, just imagine we have a guy in banjul airport in gambia and it needs a, a procedure uh, uh, updates because uh, there is a uh, important uh, uh, task that he needs to be handled or a problem and uh, previously he has to call someone uh, get the latest information etc now uh, he has an uh, ai agent who could ask get the proper information and do the uh, take the actions uh, uh, on time and with that uh, the operations would be smoother what is fascinating is that while airlines are using AI to optimize operations and improve safety, academia is taking a step back, looking at the bigger picture, asking the critical questions and shaping the future of AI ethics and governance. Yeah. Professor, so we uh, just got many people actually know the AI through uh, large language models, like two or three years ago with, uh, with ChatGPT, make us a breakthrough. Uh, and everything, everybody thinks basically everything started there, like yeah, when actually AI started, it shouldn't be this recent, right? So, so it's a long history of uh, slow development of AI, but now what is happening is an exponential uh, growth of the AI capabilities. What used to be reasoning driven inference driven now is data driven that's why we talk about big data so the more data you have and data means text um, data numbers uh, excel sheets images videos audios all of this is data medical data patients and so on all of this you can do a lot with it using this this new technology llms transformers and so on yeah and uh, you mentioned that uh, like having these data 
and investing is actually AI is expensive investment. And only the, the rich countries actually as the US and China are leading, that's why they are leading on this. Uh, uh, why is expensive and what about electricity you mentioned on your presentation? Yes, well, um, I, I gave statistics yesterday that 60% of innovation in AI is basically two countries, uh, the US and China, like patents and so on. Uh, well, the point is that first you need a lot of infrastructure, computing facilities, uh, like ChatGPT was required thousands, people say 10,000 GPUs. A GPU is a very expensive device for, for computing. It's not a CPU, like in computers, but a graphic. Uh, uh, it was, it's a graphic um, uh, processing unit, which is meant to accelerate like gaming and so on, but then it was used for, for AI computation. If, GP, if uh, ChatGPT required thousands, up to 10,000 GPUs, uh, you, you require very big computing facilities. Uh, in terms of cost of this, these um, supercomputers or data centers, but you also need a lot of energy uh, to feed this. I gave the example yesterday that ChatGPT, uh, the training of ChatGPT um, uh, gave uh, required or gave emissions, CO2 equivalent emissions, of uh, three Boeing 767 going from uh, New York to San Francisco. So it's, it's costly in energy, it's costly in terms of environmental cost, and these are the very big players who, who can really afford this. Now you find some LLMs that have been trained, uh, like in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in, uh, in, uh, in the UAE, but it's mostly, the, the, it's a lot of money that they have put in order to be able to develop this. Uh, and uh, where do you see the future as of now, for example, how do you see the future of uh, AI? Like, is it, is it going to really disrupt and change everything or is it another uh, dot-com bubble? Well, I think, I think it, is, it is really disruptive. It, it's pervasive. It's getting everywhere in all applications. We've seen in this workshop, uh, in aeronautics, uh, in uh, retail, um, uh, in manufacturing, in healthcare, in education, it's, it's getting uh, more and more into all, all sectors. This is for the immediate. At the longer run, now there are fears of unemployment caused by replacement of, of humans by, by uh, AIs and so on. So there are serious um, threats there, but we need probably innovative solutions for this. And it's not just the big players. Here young engineers and startup founders are building creative AI solutions, testing new applications in industries we might not even expect. Their fresh energy shows where the future is heading. Thank you very much, dear brother, for being uh, here. First of all, can you please introduce yourself and what, what you're doing? Of course. Uh, my name is Ahmed al Qirshi. I am from Yemen. And I am a senior AI engineer. I have a master degree specialized in uh, artificial intelligence. And yeah, I, I, I try to make AI uh, better for humanity, solve problems and not create problems. That's amazing uh, framing of, of, of what like, should be done. In my field, I try to use AI in healthcare. So to, to actually solve problems related to health and I, am, I built a project, we're doing the final touches, uh, which is an AI model that repositions drugs uh, to new diseases. So basically, uh, there might be, um, just imagine the scenario with me. Um, there is a disease which requires a very expensive medicine, expensive drug. And using this tool that we have, AI can try to suggest other drugs that can uh, treat this disease that are cheaper. Or even maybe we go further and we say that we can find drugs to diseases that they still don't have any drugs. So this can fasten the process. Of course, drug repositioning is not a new thing in the field. It's been there for centuries, perhaps, or decades, let me say. Uh, but it's been very slow because it was done manually, manual analysis. But now since we have AI, we can give it millions of drugs and disease profiles and it can analyze them and give us the results. And that's the power of AI that we need to invest in. And of course, like this is a project, I built it for my uh, thesis studies and hopefully one day it can be uh, available to public. Hopefully, it's going to benefit the whole humanity from that. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So from airlines to defense to startups, one theme is clear. AI is no longer just about algorithms and code. 
It's about solving real problems, saving fuel, protecting borders, creating new businesses and rethinking how we work. Thank you very much, dear Professor, for being here with us. During the, our workshops here, so you had excellent presentation about the AI and its physical implementation, especially on education. The last, uh, can you uh, through us talk us uh, uh, through the uh, how it's been implemented, what's the challenges you're facing, and opportunities at the same time? Uh, as you know, you know now we have generative AI and we have the uh, general models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and so on. So, and students are using them. We cannot stop students from using these uh, models. Uh, and they're benefiting from them as well. So there are many uh, studies that uh, say, oh, well, students are using them for good things. But we need, you know, you know in academia, it's only, not only teaching and learning, but there is an assessment part for the students. That's why institutions must have a uh, policies, uh, guidelines on how to use these tools. Uh, and these guidelines will benefit the student, the professors and the institution as well. And it will make sure that we are doing it right. Uh, and what, how, who do you think that uh, should uh, draw these uh, these frames of guidelines? Should come from university, from a Ministry of Education, from uh, like countries itself? Uh, well, there is no common uh, understanding of this on, on or on how to do it, and every institution is doing it their way because they have uh, other policies that will will guide them to do this. Okay, good. Um, and uh, we see different institutions doing it differently. Some institutions, they do it at the institution level and then the colleges will uh, implement it. But other universities like in the United States, they let the departments and the professors decide on how to guide the students, what policy that they need to implement. But there is, uh, for now, there is no one standard way of doing it. As we have heard through these interviews, navigating the future with AI means bringing together different perspectives, the researchers, the executives and the young innovators. Sahara Group established 2008. We are now in 17 year in operation. Uh, we came up with this idea when people started to come to Turkey for training. Then we said, why not to have this as a business? And now we are providing wide range of programs uh, from management all the way to aviation for mid and upper management from 60 plus countries. And uh, this particular program, leadership program, we started four years back. Uh, the idea was we do many programs around the year, but we said let us have a multinational program. So we bring uh, executives from around the world for a particular theme. And the title of the main program is Leadership in WUKA World, as we are living in very volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguity environment. And we said that should be the main title, but every year we uh, select a theme, a particular subject to work on. Each has a role in shaping how this technology will affect our lives. The question now is, how fast can we adapt and how far will AI take us? Thanks for now and see you in the next episode.